Well, how do then, chums? Says I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, for you guys out there in the viewerverse, I just want to talk a little bit about No Man's Sky. Now, I did a video the other day about what I thought could be on the cards for an update and all that sort of shenanigans. Now, I've got quite a lot of overwhelming comments of people listing out the things that they would like to see to come into game. And I was sort of doing a mental checklist. Could that make it in? Tick. Could that make it in? Tick, etc, etc. As I was going through each of these comments and looking at them. Now, a lot of the things that are on those tick lists that people would like to see come into game, a lot of them have already done ideas videos on. I've got a playlist containing 44, 44 things that I would like to see come into No Man's Sky. And in fact, I'll put that playlist over there. Go and hit it up. It's a brilliant, awesome playlist. The only thing I would say and looking at your comments and your checklists is a lot of these things i honestly don't think are going to make it into no man's sky and that's what i want to talk about today while i'm having a cup of tea with you chappies and chapettes inside of the view of us yes my chums it's easy to just say chums isn't it and chaps and chapettes chums covers everybody yeah it's all inclusive a lot of people was thinking i was saying chumps which is an american word no chums chums you know that TV show you had in America is called Friends? If that was an English version, we would have called it Chums. Yeah? All right. Look up, look up the word Chums. Yes. It's not the stuff you throw in the ocean when you're trying to lure in bigger fish. No, that's Chum. That's something completely different too. Anyway, going off on tangents here. Where were we? Where were we before I interrupted myself? <laughs> yes. So things that I don't think are coming into No Man's Sky and why I don't think they're coming into No Man's Sky. If they were going to come into No Man's Sky, I think we would have seen it way before now. It's like the Super Formula. The Super Formula is something I've banged on about enough times. If you just type in Captain Steve, No Man's Sky, Super Formula, you're going to find at least three to four videos that I've done around the Super Formula and why I don't think it made it into iteration. Some of it is legal stuff, which is a little bit boring, but at the same time, you're going to get the full synopsis of that. Do a search, have a look. If, that's, if you're after infinite variety, if that's one of the things that you put down in the comments, it's one of the things you want to see, more fauna, more flora, more variety to planet, which I saw echoed a couple of times in the last few comments sections of some of my most recent videos. I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't think we're ever going to see the likes of the Super Formula make it into No Man's Sky in current iteration. Now, I'm going to say that quite a lot during this little mini checklist, but then I'm going to bring back some hope towards the end of this video. So keep watching if you are hoping on to and holding on to the Super Formula idea, because I've got some maybe a way that it could appear inside of game. In fact, I've got two ways, two ways, and I'll be getting into those in a moment. Another thing that I've seen people sound off about is ship customization. Yes, that's appeared quite a few times, and mega cities have appeared quite a few times. Now, these things I honestly don't think are going to make it in. OK, right, so now the reasons why I don't think they're going to make it in, these massive things that people are hoping for. The Super Formula and Massive Variety inside of No Man's Sky was something that was boasted about before launch and pre-order launch. They talked about the Super Formula. There seems to be a guy that actually owned a patent for that Super Formula map to happen. Gaias or something, Gaias or something like that. You can look into it all. It was in the Engoodening of No Man's Sky, that video. Um, but yes, I've done a deep dive into it. And yes, there was a patent. That patent lapsed ages ago. We're talking about two to three years ago, pre-pandemic, it lapsed. And I was really hoping that during the pandemic, when Sean Murray said, all we can do now is sit down and make games. I was honestly hoping that they were looking to bring the Super Formula in. And when we saw that snowflake emoji appear for fractals, and fractals are all different, and it's to do with math and fractal math, which could tie into the Super Formula loosely, I honestly thought we would have got more variety then. It didn't happen. Now, I believe that was a wasted emoji and chance if they were ever to add in variety. It almost felt like they trolled us slightly on that one. I still feel a bit bitter. <laughs> As I was on sympathy. But anyway... So there's that. There's legal ramifications around the Super Formula as to why I don't think it would go in. But there's also technological reasons why I don't think it would go in. So those technological reasons is we've now got No Man's Sky on the Nintendo Switch of all consoles, which it runs it. Yeah, it runs it until you get to a certain point within inside of your save where you've got more than, say, I don't know, six or seven frigates. 
and then it starts to crash whenever you summon in your freighter. So if you have got it on Switch, maybe only get five frigates, or three, just to be sure. And also the sentinelized ships. As soon as you own a sentinelized ship and you start flying around in a sentinelized ship on Switch and start doing some of the Echo sort of content or the corrupted sentinels, it gets a bit too busy for the Switch. I've seen it lag massively and also freeze and, and crash. I watch Budget Reno pretty much every time there's a new update. For No Man's Sky, Budget Reno picks back up his Switch, loads it up and sees if it's any better. It has got better. It has. I mean, it doesn't crash as often, but that's not to say that the crashes don't happen. They still happen from time to time. So if you haven't subscribed to Budget Reno, hit him up, especially if you've got a Switch, because he, he covers Switch games predominantly. Anyways, yeah, I'll put a link. I'll put a link to Budget Reno. I'll put, I'll put his channel link over there. Go check him out. He's a lovely guy. He, he uses top shelf language, so just be aware of that. You know, don't, don't put it in the hands of, like, you know, somebody under the age of 14 or something. But anyways, there's, there's that. I just, I think that we're now limited by the weakest denominator. And sorry, Switch, you're the weakest denominator inside of this repertoire of consoles. I guess you are. So you're always limited by the restrictions that the technology brings. And the technology in this case as the weakest one is the Switch. But not only the Switch, we've also got PlayStation VR 4. I mean, VR, VR on the PlayStation 4. Bloody hell. <laughs> PlayStation VR on the PlayStation 4 is also quite a weak denominator. You know, it's okay well and saying, well, we've got VR 2 now. Well, not everybody's got VR 2. A lot of people are on VR 1. So that's also a weakest link there. So there's two weak consoles there that are holding it back slightly, in my opinion. Okay? Right. Anyway, so I think there's technological limitations. And that goes for ship customization. That goes for mega cities. I mean, heck, the Switch hasn't even got settlements in it. So if you start adding in mega cities, what's that going to do to the Switch, apart from make it melt? You know? So there's that, too. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, well, okay, well, that just shattered my dreams. Maybe not, okay? Because technically what Hello Games could do is they could turn around and say, right, well, the old Xbox, the old PlayStation 4, PlayStation VR 1, and Nintendo Switch, that's one generation. So we're now going to do No Man's Sky Next Gen updates, and that's for PlayStation 5, Xbox X, Xbox Series S, and S then becomes the weakest denominator in this list, and PC. So you've got higher end, and also like the Valve and PlayStation VR 2. So you've got all those that are nested together as next gen. So whenever Hello Games do updates, they do next gen updates, then they also do previous gen updates for the Switch, for the old PlayStation 4, and the old Xbox. They could do a separation of sorts. So whenever they do a next gen update, we might get all that sort of variation. We might get ship customization. We might get mega cities. And what the, next, the last gen gets is they might get elements of that. They might get little touches in those areas, but it's not going to be as magnificent as what we see on the next gen consoles. So I'm thinking there might be a divide and a bit of a bridge that might happen. That's kind of where I'm thinking. If I was a developer at Hello Games, that's what I would be thinking. I'd be thinking, okay, we've got these limitations. Well, those limitations can apply to these consoles and this console set has got less limitations. So we can do more there. They've already done one next gen update is what I'm thinking. They've already done one next gen update. What's to stop them from doing more next gen updates and then just having that divide, that little mini separation. But I honestly think that Hello Games is sort of starting to move people over to whatever their new platform is. However, there is some evidence that goes against that idea. When I was looking through the patch notes of the Echoes update, some of the screenshots in the top left hand corners and things like that, where it lists the players' names, I saw Bo Lamb's name there. Bo. And there are a few others that I know are some of their arty party type people that put a lot of effort into No Man's Sky. If they have done a separation of the team, they've still got some of the old OGs, you know, over there assisting on No Man's Sky or at least playing through it because some of the screenshots are from the original crew, which I love to see. That's fantastic. That gives me a sense that they're still there, they're still beavering away on this passion project, which is No Man's Sky. That's not to say they haven't got a secondary passion project and maybe they're jumping ships and jumping backwards and forwards. And that could be why we're seeing a few little bugs making it into iteration and into updates. So I don't want to completely 
scupper people's dreams of no man's sky becoming what they feel it could be and reaching its potential that we all have inside of our hearts and minds. I mean, some people have managed to unlock a lot of that potential using mods, so we do know what the game engine is capable of on high-end PCs. We've seen all sorts come over on the Nexus mods, and I know that modders inside of the community are not seen in the same sort of way as we see other content creators, I suppose. A lot of people don't really like watching modded gameplay. I tried doing modded gameplay the other year, and I got a right mixed bag of comments. I even had people saying I'm unsubscribing because you're not playing the game that I can play on my console. I don't want to see mods. It was very odd. So I, I have seen some of that friction for the modding community. However, what I would say to you people is one day, Hello Games might move away from No Man's Sky onto another passion project that they deem as having more sort of longevity than No Man's Sky. But then again, you know, I mean, if that does happen, the modding community is where you're going to get your updates. That's where the variety is going to come from. And maybe more people might be pushed to PC to pick up modded No Man's Sky because that's going to breathe new life into the game where Hello Games might not be. But then is that really a reality when we've seen Hello Games update No Man's Sky for seven years straight and not charge for a single update? Well, that's another thing. Inside of Sean Murray's free, uh, feed, he often says, here's another update, and it's free. And this is free. This is free. And we're not charging for this. That sort of terminology. And one day, that might change. You know, who knows? If they're not making any cash off of new sales for No Man's Sky, I mean, they brought it to every single freaking platform you can dream of, apart from mobile devices. So at some point, their revenue stream for No Man's Sky is going to slow. I don't think it's going to completely stop. I think people are waking up to No Man's Sky as being a serious sci-fi contender. It's like the launch of Starfield. The launch of Starfield, people were looking for that seamless experience in Starfield and not finding it and finding loading screens, and they found it jarring to the point that they said, well, what other sci-fi games are an alternative? And the alternative that pops up no Man's Sky for that seamless experience that there's no loading screens. A lot of people have jumped over from hearing how awesome No Man's Sky is in that regard because they didn't find that aspect inside of Starfield. So it actually done them a favor, you know? So there has been a little bit of an uptick in the No Man's Sky audience. Now, if you have picked up No Man's Sky and you found it through Starfield and you're feeling that sentiment resonates with you, Please hit that like, please hit the subscribe, I do No Man's Sky content, I also do Starfield content, and I try to play Starfield in the same way that I play No Man's Sky, I do a lot of scanning and stuff anyway, that's a bit of a shameless plug, but please sound off in the comments, let us know if this resonated with you. Did you find No Man's Sky through Starfield? I guess, that'd be nice to hear. Anyway, so I often do these cup of teas with Captain Steve episodes, or I did, and I sort of stopped and I just went into doing content because we had so many new games on the horizon. But I'm going to be bringing these No Man's Sky type cup of teas with Captain Steve. But also cup of teas with Captain Steve where I just talk about geeky stuff that appeals to me on the Tinter web as a regular thing to my channel. Or at least I'm hoping to. That's how I feel right now. Could run out of ideas within a week. <laughs> But, you know, they will come back as and when my creative juices are flowing. And the tea, I guess, this is my own brew of tea. Captain's Brew. Yes, I've got my own brand of tea. I know, right? It's freaking awesome. It's a breakfast tea. It's really oaky and smooth. It's great. It's quite relaxing as well. Anyhow, links for that is in the video description. Another shameless plug. So, yeah, I don't want to scupper people's dreams is where I'm going with this. But at the same time, I only think that Hello Games can deliver on those dreams if they do quite a harsh separation between next gen and previous gen. I would love to see some more ray tracing elements come into next gen. I would love to see them use more graphical fidelity options on previous gen to deliver in what they can when it comes to performance. And they're always doing that as well. You can see them trying their best to make things work on previous gen. And that must be a real hard juggling act with inside of their studio. I think enough time has passed now for people to have moved or make the transition from the old Xboxes to the newer versions of Xbox or from the old version of PlayStation to the newer version of PlayStation. I can understand the pushback originally because these consoles just weren't available. There was a, a there was a massive great big shortage in these consoles. But now you can just walk in off the high street and pick one up at your local GameStop or at your local Toys R Us 
or the equivalent of Smith Toys or whatever. You can find the consoles. John Lewis sells them. You know, I was in Morrison's the other day. I saw them in there. They're, they're on the shelves, people, is what I'm saying. And they've actually dropped in price. They're a little bit more openly and affordable to others. Or you can trade in previous gen along with a load of games or other sort of tech or DVDs at CEX or the equivalent and pick yourself up one of these next gen consoles at a bit of a snip or a little bit of a discounted price if you can trade in some old electrical goods that you're no longer using. Or even at cash converters, Kettle picked one up. Uh, Mr. Kettle picked up a Series S just the other week. And you got it for like 140 quid. A Series S. And even some mobile phone contracts are giving them away for free if you get a new mobile phone out or stuff. So there's things like that that you can look around for. Keep your eye peepers open. And if you see a massive deal, if you see an awesome deal on a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X or S, sound up in the comments. Yeah, sound up in the comments. I mean, hyperlinks sometimes don't go through, but I do check all the comments that are held. And if I see that there's a hyperlink to a really cool bargain, I'll be sure to let it through, you know? don't know why uh, YouTube does that. I've actually put, don't withhold any comments, but they do. Eh, I can't really stop them. It's their platform at the end of the day. I just sit on it. There we go. Anyway, people, cheers. I'm going to go drink the rest of my tea, but hopefully that's given you food for thought. Again, sound up in the comments. Let us know whether you think that's a good idea. Do you think it's about time that Hello Games looked at the actual next gen platforms and started doing updates tailored towards next gen, but also try their best with previous gen to bring as much over as they possibly can within reason, without breaking the platforms? Because that's another thing. I've seen a lot of Switch players say they would rather have a fully working version rather than a version that tries to do a little bit more than it should and crash. So that's another thing, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going off on a side tangent. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.